<sighs> yeah, good morning, peace. Um, this is part two, this is part two of the Bible and topics around the Bible, questions that people may have had or has been thinking about. So hopefully you can use this topic to um, answer your questions. So this topic is a simple topic. It's called, um, has the Bible ever been translated? So these are things that people come up with all the time. You know, people say this, people say that about the Bible and stuff like that. Oh, the Bible's been translated. The Bible's been written by man. So I did the class last night about the fact that, um, you know, who wrote the Bible? I, I did that class. You know, so you got to study these things for you to understand what is truly going on. Uh, that therefore you are not ignorant, right, as to what the truth is. So let me go to, let me go to a verse, right? Let me go to a verse so that you see what is truly going on and hopefully you can ascertain for yourself what is truly going on. Because you must, a person must study. You know, that's the thing that I found out is that a lot of people just don't want to study. You know, they they believe in lies. So I'm going to go to the Savior himself, uh, which is a black man of the tribe of Judah. His name is Jesus the Christ. Now in Hebrew, that's another name in of itself. But let's go into the book of John, right, and see what he says about studying. Right. Um, so he's going to use light and darkness as uh, showing a point. Uh, this is John, the third chapter, the 19th, 20th, and 21st verse. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. See, light is knowledge. But he says men and women love darkness rather than light. See, darkness, when you can't see, when you are ignorant, you love darkness. And you want to stay that way. You want to be, because their deeds are evil. It says, for everyone that doeth evil hated the light. So the less that you study, the less that you study, the more you love that darkness. And therefore, you can reside like rats like rats, okay? Neither come into the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So what does it mean, neither come into the light, lest your deeds should be reproved? Your deeds, it's like, it's like you're dirty and you don't want to go take a shower because you like the way that you smell. You like the way that you smell. Okay, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that do truth come into the light that his deeds might be made manifest, that they are rough in the most high. See that? So the more you study, the more you come to the light. And who is the light? Let's who, let's see who is the light, okay? You got to come to the light, man. The light is Christ, okay? Let's see who is the light. Let's go to John 12. I mean... This is John 14, uh, John 14, matter of fact, matter of fact, let's go to a better verse, showing you that the Savior, he is the light. You got to come to him. You can't go around him. You cannot go around him. You can't try to finagle your way. There's no slipping by. You know, you got to come to the Savior. This is John 8, verse 12. Thus spake the Savior again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. See that? 
This is the Savior. This is the Savior. He is the light, man. Huh? So he is knowledge. He is everything. So you got to go to him. You got to sit down. You got to sit down and study for yourself. You know, you can't, you can't ask somebody else to study for you. And then when they give you the answers, now you upset. Okay. So the Savior, he is the light. Um, everything is simple about the Bible, man. This book, the word Bible, comes from a Greek word, which means to hold back, restrain, and, uh, you know, no, that's not the meaning of the word Bible. That's the meaning of the word religion. The word Bible comes from a Greek word, which means biblios, which is a, or biblia, which is a collection of records, right? So there are many different collections of records out there, which are Bibles. Uh, the Arab book, the Quran is a Bible. The, the Ethiopians have a Bible called the Bagad Vita. I mean, no, the Kebra Negras. The Egyptians have a Bible called the Egyptian Book of the Dead or the Book of the Coming In of Day and Night. Okay? So these are different records or Bibles. But the book that we're talking about it's just been labeled the King James Bible. So that's what we're going to talk about. Right? So, did King James make a Bible? No, he did not. I proved that last night. It's just that he just happened to be the king that was present at that time. Okay? So that's another lie that has been put down on these records of the Lord and the Israelite writers. Part two. So was the Bible ever translated? The records, the first translation of the Bible is the uh, Greek records when the Greeks came into existence. Uh, I think about 303 BC, which was something called the Septuagint. Now, the Septuagint means 70. 70 Israelite, black, Hebrew, Israelite elders translated when the Greeks under Alexander the Great, which is white men, came in into rulership, they translated the records from Hebrew into the Greek. Okay, that's the first translation. Now, there was no New Testament at that time. There was no New Testament at that time. They translated uh, the Torah, which is the Torah is five books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Then Joshua, Isaiah, stuff like that. They translated those scrolls, which were rolled up. See, I'm breaking this down. They translated those scrolls. So it was 70 elders because the Greeks couldn't do it. So once again, the question is, was the Bible ever translated? So the first translation is Jerome Latin Vulgate. Now I'm giving you time spans. I'm giving you books or Bibles that were in existence before the King James, and I'm giving you the time span. It says the Jerome Latin Vulgate between 383 and 45 AD. AD is out of the many in the year of our Lord. Becomes the most popular Bible used for many centuries yet only the clergy and the monks could read it. Now, poor people never had scriptures. What the Lord did was he made sure that everybody now has a Bible using the white man and Roman Catholicism and Christianity. Now, everybody all over the world has a Bible and you're going to be condemned. Okay? The next book that was uh, came after that was John Wycliffe. Now, Remember, these are all records of the Israelites, okay? John Wycliffe, these just happened to be white men that saw the records and studied it and put it back, but their name was affixed to it, all right? John Wycliffe, 1380 to 82, translated the Bible from Latin to English 
which made it available to the common ordinary lay folk to read as well. The next heir came was the William Tylendale, 1525, an Oxford scholar and priest who translated the New Testament from the Greek and Old Testament from the Hebrew. Tylendale is known as the father of the English Bible. See, I'm breaking this down for you, okay? Miles Cloverdale, 1535 AD, translated out of the German and Latin into English with the help of the different translators, basically a revision of Tylendale's. Thomas Matthew, 1537, translated exactly from Tylendale's and Cloverdale's version of the Old and New Testaments. Now, you can buy these books. You can go online and buy these records, okay? It's going to cost you money, but, you know, if you doubt, I've seen these records, you know, but I wasn't really as interested then or now because I know the truth of the King James Bible from Genesis to Revelation, so I don't need to validate any more, okay, since I've studied all these things for quite a long period of time. Thomas Matthew, uh, uh, okay, we read that, the Great Bible, 1539. Named so because of its large size and splendor, a revision of the Matthews Bible by Miles Clovendale. The Genevan Bible, 1560, a group of exiles from England, William Whittenham, John Calvin, John Knox, who fled to Geneva, Switzerland, revised the entire Bible from Cloverdale, Great Bible, and out of the Hebrew. This is known as the Breaches Bible. So you'll hear... If you're very studious about the Lord's Word and the history and what happened in the past for what's present, you will hear these terms and these names and so forth like that. The Bishop's Bible, translated by several archbishops of the Church of England, in answer to the Genevan Bible, which contained numerous marginal notes opposing the clergy. Okay, so you're getting this stuff now. You can see if what I'm saying is true. You can look this stuff up. There's Bible dictionaries. And you can look this stuff up online. You can look this stuff up. Okay, the Reims Duguay Bible, 1582 to 1609 to 1610. Remember that time, 1610. Translated into English from the Latin Vulgate by a Roman Catholic scholar, Gregory Martin, another white man. Okay. The New Testament was published in Reims, France in 1582 and the Old Testament in Douai, France in 1609-1610. Thus we have the Reims New Testament and the Douai Old Testament. Now, here we go, 1610, right? Remember that. The King James 1611 Bible in 1603. This is the world-famous Bible that everybody reads, that everybody has problems with. Months after King James ascended the throne of England, he authorized a new translation of the Bible to replace the Bishop's Bible, which came out in 1568. He assembled an estimate of 54 of the best Greek and Hebrew scholars of that era and divided them into six groups. Three groups to translate the Old Testament, two for the New Testament, and one for the Apocrypha. Bang. See that? One for the Apocrypha. See? So nothing that my elders taught me was in factual. That's what I tell you. The people that you'll listen to is garbage. The people that you'll listen to and study from is garbage. Okay? My elders broke it down. That's who the Lord put the spirit on. He assembled an estimate of 54 of the best Hebrew scholars of that era and died, divided them into six groups. Three groups to translate the Old Testament, two for the New Testament, and one for the Apocrypha. Part 3 was the Bible ever translated. These scholars were translating not only from the bishops and Tylenin version, but also from the original Hebrew and Greek manuscripts. The Greek manuscripts going back all the way to the Septuagint. 
Each group submitted their work to 12 men, two from each panel, and in cases of special difficulty, learned men outside the Board of Revisers were consulted. The Revisers devoted eight years. So this is the hypocrisy that people say that King James wrote the Bible. I mean, what do you, where do you get this stuff from? Where do you get this stuff from? King James wrote the Bible. I mean, what do you just jump on any lie that you hear and you just pass it on? And then you say that you're intelligent? That is, is that what you do? Is that what you do? Listen to this. You can find this information. This is not something that I typed up. This is years. This information right here is years of studying about the Bible, not what's in the Bible, about the Bible. How did the Bible come into existence that you have? This book, the writing, the binding, who bind it, who put it together. That's why the Lord said this in Proverbs. Okay? This is what the Lord said in Proverbs. Proverbs 4, verse 7. He says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. See that? People don't understand. That's why when you ask them questions about the Bible, not even what's in the Bible, about the Bible, they start squirming. They, they become like Floyd Mayweather. They be ducking and diving, slipping and sliding. You understand what I'm saying? They become super boxes because they don't sit down and study how did the Bible who created the printing press to bind the Bible, the, the, the scrolls together? Who created that? Who created that? Okay. I mean, these are things that the Lord showed me in the spirit. You got to study this. You got to study that. You got to study this because they're going to come with these questions. They're going to come with these questions. Okay. So just closing on was the Bible ever translated Right, the revisers devoted eight years to this task, and even an extra nine months after the revision was complete to have an additional revision done by a special committee before being published in 1611. So that's how King James put his name, just like Obama put his name on Obamacare that everybody's always arguing about, Obamacare. You understand? They crafted that, all the politicians and whatever. It's just that he happened to be the president. So King James just happened to be the king of England with the authority and the power that, and then later on in time, the book started to take off. Okay? So now, the numerous scholars who translated this multitude of the Bible's versions were only fulfilling the prophecies of the Lord's word reaching all nations, being translated into another tongue in order to accomplish the will of the Most High. So what is that really talking about? Let's go to Isaiah 28, verse 11. Let's see what that's really talking about. Isaiah 28, verse 11. He says, I'm going to start at 9. He says, whom shall he teach knowledge? Which is the word. The word, the word is knowledge. There's no other knowledge greater than the word. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? What doctrine? The doctrine of Christ. Okay, the doctrine of Christ is the doctrine of the Most High. And them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, from a low state when a baby is born and the baby is sucking on the mother's breast, he's getting that milk because he can't eat the hype steak and bones and meat and stuff like that. That's how the Lord breaking it down. For a precept, must be upon precept. That's why people don't know how to read the Bible. Okay, they try to go in the Bible and read it verse to verse, chapter to chapter, page to page. They don't understand. That's not how the Lord broke put this book down because this book is a mystery. Okay, this book is a mystery. For precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Listen to this well. For with stammering lips and another tongue Will he speak to this people? Why another tongue? Because the, the scriptures was written in Hebrew. But he knew that the Israelites 
were going into captivity under another nation and under another language, which would be another tongue. So he had those people, the Europeans or the white man or the Italians, you understand, Roman Catholicism, he had them translate the records into English. So when you were brought here in slavery, the book would be sitting here waiting for you in English. When you were brought to Haiti, and as you in France or whatever, the book is sitting there waiting for you. That's what the Bible is about. That's why now the Lord has put the Bible in every different language. Therefore, no matter where you go, you can't say, well, I did not know because it wasn't in my tongue. Therefore, the Lord has condemned you. The Lord has condemned you by you not keeping his word. The Lord has condemned you. When you go to hotels and you open up a little Psalms Gideon's Bible and you read it and then you close it and you think that you're not going to be held accountable for it, yes, you are going to be held accountable. In the day of judgment, you are going to be held accountable. Okay. 12 verse. To whom he said, this is the rest that you may cause the weary to rest. See that? This is the rest. Not sleeping. Not sleeping. When I read this book, I feel so good because I rest. I rest in the words of the book. I rest in the word. This is the rest. You know, not chilling with the white man or their madness. That ain't no rest. Ain't no rest there. Okay? We're not at rest here in this stinking country. We're not at rest. Okay? This is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. We will not what? We will not hear. We, we want to go to the white man. We want to go to this group. We want to go to a different group. We want to do this. We want to do it our way. Nah, that's not what the Lord got for us, man. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, hear a little, that they may go and fall backwards and be broken and sneered and taken. So this is all the lies that people manifest down through time. Well, the Bible was written by King James, that the Bible is written by a white man, but yet they ain't got no black books out here. Wait. Wait. What is their black books that they pull up? The first black book that they pull up is the Egyptian Book of the Dead or the Quran. Number one, those are two different nations that are not black people. Black in skin color, but they are not us. The Quran is by the Arabs. The Arabs sold us into slavery. The Arabs sold us into slavery. Go and look up the history. This historical fact. So those are your enemies. Number two, the Egyptians are dog people. Okay? And they're written about in the Bible. They're not our people either. They had us in slavery. So the first Egyptian Bible is the book of the dead or the book of the coming in of day and night. And then the Arabs wrote the Quran. The Lord ain't got no dealings with that. The Lord ain't got no dealings with that. So I'm going to close. All right? I'm going to close. I want to show you that the Lord made no covenant with the Arabs. So, you know, they're going to be terminated. Seriously. They're going to be terminated. Them, their, their brick house, their crap that they believe in. Let me show you. In the Bible, that the Lord made no covenant with Ishmael. Ishmael is the father of the Arab race that you see in existence running around over there. So just to close, not going to deal too much on that tangent because they run around with a book and they say, well, you know, the Lord wrote this after the Bible. And a lot of black people bite into that. But let's see. Did the Lord make a covenant with them? This is Genesis, the 17th chapter, and go three verses, right? 17 verse 19. And the Lord said, Sarah thy wife indeed shall be thee son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will make my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Check this out. And as for Ishmael, who is Ishmael? See, you must study the Bible. The Bible is a science book. 
Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. Okay, so when you study the Bible, you must now study races, their fathers and where they live, geography, their regions right now. That's what the Bible is about. Okay, and as for Ishmael, I have heard of him and I have blessed him and I will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes will he beget and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall be unto thee at this set time in the next year. No covenant was made with the Arabs and the Lord. They're just a nation like any other nation that the Lord said, I will make them great. But that's it. My covenant is not with them. So these are the lies and fabrications. Okay. Uh, that's part two. Last night I did... Who wrote the Bible? I broke that down. This is part two. Uh, was the Bible ever translated? So I'm breaking down about the Bible now. Uh, later on tonight, I'm going to go into the entire history of the King James, right? And then after that, I'm going to go into the evolution of the word church from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And then the last part I'm going to go into about the Bible itself and around the Bible is the truth about churches. So you must sit down and study. Knowledge. Knowledge. Peace.